Wonderful news, the PlayStation 4 version 7.55 has been jailbroken, and in this video I'm going to show you every step that it takes to get your own PlayStation 4 on official firmware version 7.55 jailbroken, and it all starts right now. The first order of business is to disconnect your PlayStation 4 from the internet. I've unplugged the LAN cable here, but either disconnect by unplugging your LAN cable or disconnecting your Wi-Fi on the PlayStation 4. No need having an official firmware version installed that you don't want. Now use the D-pad to navigate up to the top navigation ribbon and select settings with the X button. In the settings main menu, use the D-pad to scroll down through the list of choices until you get to the one labeled system. Select system with the X button and the first thing you'll see in the system menu will be system information. Select system information with the X button. Here you'll find the official software version that your PlayStation 4 is currently on. And in this case, this PlayStation 4 is on version 7.02. I'll show you how to upgrade to 7.55 the right way. You can leave your PS4 powered on right here and head to your PC. The PS4 official firmwares list has all of the original PlayStation 4 firmwares available for download. You will need to set up an account on the site and log in in order to access the downloads. Since we're doing an upgrade here rather than a complete install on a new hard drive, you'll want to access the ones that are on the list to the far left. Go down to the one that says 7.55 and click on download. This downloads the update file that you'll need to update your PS4 to 7.55. Insert a USB drive formatted in XFAT format into your computer. In the downloads folder, you'll find a file for PS4 update 755.pup. You'll need to rename this file. All you have to do is just remove the version number from the file name. So instead of what you see here, just change it to say PS4 update.pup. With the file renamed, right click on it and select copy. Now navigate to the USB drive that you have plugged into your computer, the one that's in XFAT format. In this example, it's drive F, but it may be different on your computer. Right click on the root of the USB drive, go to new, and folder. Name this folder PS4. Then double click into the PS4 folder, right click, new folder, and name this folder update, U-P-D-A-T-E. Now double click on the update folder, right click, and paste the PS3 update.pup file right here. That's where the PlayStation 4 needs to locate the official firmware in order to do the update. All right, you're done with your PC at this point. You can close out File Explorer. Then you can safely eject the USB drive from your computer and plug it into your PS4, which should still be on the system information screen. Hey, if you're getting value from this video, make sure you subscribe. You'll get content on leveling up your video game hardware and software through restorations, repairs, mods, product reviews, and other video game content. And we have an incredible group of gamers here. You belong here with us. Smash that subscribe button and ring the bell. All right, let's get back to it. Back on your PlayStation 4, press the circle button to go back in the menus. Use the D-pad to go down one listing in the menu to get to automatic downloads and select it with the X button. We don't want the console doing any automatic updates. You're gonna be in the driver's seat for this one. Make sure everything in automatic downloads is unchecked. You don't want your console to attempt to do any automatic downloads of official firmware or anything else. You're gonna do that over the USB in just a moment. Press the circle button to go back one level in the menus. From here, press the circle button again to go back one more level in the menus. You'll be back at the main settings menu. Use the D-pad to scroll up through the menu choices until you see one that says system software update. Then select it with the X button to continue. You'll get a confirmation message that it wants to install version 7.55 of the official firmware. Select next with the X button to continue. You get a notification that your console will restart and install the update. Select update to continue. Just be aware that you cannot downgrade your system once you do a system firmware update. Your system will automatically restart and complete the upgrade. Back at the PlayStation 4 main menu, let's just make sure the system update went to plan. Use the D-pad to scroll up to the navigation ribbon at the top. Scroll over to settings and select settings with the X button. At the settings main menu, use the D-pad to navigate down toward the bottom to system again. Then select system with the X button to continue. 
And inside system, the first listing is system information, select it with the X button. And here you can see the upgrade to 7.55 was successful. Press the circle button to go back to the settings main menu. Use the D-pad to scroll up one level to power save settings and select it with X. From here, use the D-pad to scroll down to select features available in rest mode and select it with X. Make sure that supply power to USB ports is set to always. Press the X button, it pulls up a side menu. Then select always from the list of choices. This makes sure that your controllers are charging and that you can access USB storage if your system goes into rest mode. Everything else here should be turned off. Just make sure that each of these other choices is unchecked. Once you've confirmed that all of these settings are correct, press the circle button on the controller to go back one level in the menu. Then press the circle button again to go back to the settings main menu. From here, press the circle button to go back to the PlayStation 4 main menu. And don't forget to either plug in your LAN cable or activate your wireless internet in your PlayStation 4 and your network settings. In the PlayStation 4 menu, navigate to the web browser with a www on it and select it with the X button to launch the web browser. You'll want to do some cleanup and maintenance work before you attempt to jailbreak your PlayStation 4. There are four key tasks to complete here. Let's go over them one at a time. Press the Options button on the controller and you'll load up a side menu of choices. The first thing to do is scroll down with the D-pad to Delete All. Select Delete All with the X button to continue. What you're doing is you're actually just deleting frequently visited websites, which is not necessary. Select it with the X button to delete the frequently visited websites. Now press the Options button again to load up that side menu. Scroll up with the D-pad to Browsing History and select Browsing History with the X button. From here, press the Options button on the controller to pull up a side menu again. The only choice is going to be to clear your browsing history. Select that with the X button and select X for OK to continue. Once this is done, press the Circle button to go back. Again, press the Options button on the controller to load the side menu. From here, scroll up until you get to Settings and select Settings with the X button. Let's go over a few things here that are critical to your success. First of all, you don't need cookies, so you can uncheck this if you have it checked already. You do want to enable JavaScript though. Use the D-pad to scroll down and make sure that JavaScript is checked. From here, scroll down to Delete Cookies because you don't need them anyway. Select it with the X button and you'll be presented with the option to clear out the cookies. Select OK to delete any cookies saved on the machine. Now use the D-pad to scroll down to Clear Website Data. Select this with the X button, and when prompted, select OK with the X button to confirm. The point of all of this is to clear out any excess junk out of your browser to give the jailbreak process the best chance for success. Now press Circle to go back to the main section of your web browser. Use the D-pad to scroll up until you get to the web address section and press X. Then you can type in the address for the web exploit that's hosted on the GitHub. And I have this link for you in the description below. The first message it has is to expect to get insufficient memory errors. Not a problem. I'll show you how to deal with them. It's going to cache some files that you need. And once that process is done, you'll need to press the circle button to close your browser and then immediately go right back into it. Circle closes the browser, and then just press X to go right back in. Cool, now you're at the main interface. What you need to do at this point is select the version of the official firmware you have, and in this case, this is on 7.55. Go up to where it says Mira, this is the actual jailbreak itself. Go to Mira 7.55, and then select it with the X button to launch it. Here's the deal, you can expect to see these not enough free system memory error messages pop up. And in some cases, when I've tried to run the jailbreak, they've popped up as many as about seven or eight times. One of the times they didn't pop up at all. Just be prepared to expect them and just press X to go through. But if you've done everything correctly up to this point and you persist through it, this is what you'll see. It will start to initiate the process and you'll see some text along the bottom left corner of the screen indicating things are rolling along. Then in just a moment, it will start to pile up some text information across the top of the screen. You should get a waiting for client notification at the top left corner. And then the screen goes black. But don't worry, everything's going to plan. I just wanted to really emphasize this so you didn't turn off the console at this point thinking something didn't go right because it did. Because check this 
out. When your console comes back up to the main menu, let's just double check and make sure that everything went to plan and that the jailbreak was successful. Use the D-pad to navigate up to the navigation ribbon at the top, then scroll over to the right to settings and select settings with the X button. From here, use the D-pad to scroll down in the menus all the way to the bottom. And when you get to debug settings, press the X button. You'll see menu listings inside debug settings that give you all kind of new options. Why not learn how to put these new menu settings to use and install RetroArch and your favorite retro games on your PlayStation 4? Check out this video here. It's shown on screen in the desktop browsing experience and linked in the pinned comment and description below. I'll look forward to seeing you there in the next video.